I am working on a project to help everyone understand uh, where our greatest needs are for content. So I've had several people uh, contact uh, contact me through the open form, and the same question came up several times, saying, "Well, what's the greatest need for activities? Where where do you need content?" So in order to address that accurately and make sure that we're we're keeping ourselves honest. Uh, one thing that I did was create this outcomes tracker so that everybody could see exactly where we stand. And, um, you know, using this, you can see exactly why we call ourselves a curriculum project and not a, a specific curriculum yet. We're almost there uh, on K2. We're, we're pretty close. 3-5, we've got a lot of, a lot of holes to fill obviously. Uh, so what we want to do is work together to, to address all of these and uh, the team of contributors that, that we have uh, already on board have started writing some of some activities for these holes, but uh, I wanted to let you all kind of see the process that we go through. So the way that the tracker works is the standards are across the top, the outcome codes are down the left hand side, uh, the green means that we have targeted those standards specifically and uh, so working backward design before we uh, begin or I should say at the beginning stages of creating a module the very first thing we do is pull the outcomes that we're working towards after that we go through and uh, we design the the actual instructional activities that will meet those those outcomes so the green ones mean that we have targeted them specifically the yellow, uh, they mean that we, um, we've addressed those collaterally through the activities in the modules. So for example, um, here this says CP3. So that means collateral. Down here P3 is the code that we have internally uh, for locomotor and manipulative skills, which is going to be uh, done being formatted next week and, and we're going to post for everybody to see. So within the activities in there, um, we address uh, fitness standard three, um, outcome E1. And uh, even though it's not the focus of, of that activity, it's addressed collaterally. So the outcome gap, uh, those are identified by the orange cells. And you can see in the K2, uh, we have not addressed at all uh, 10 of the outcomes and then in 3 through 5 we haven't addressed 20 of the outcomes. Uh, so what we want to do now is try to find a strand um, that goes from K through 5 uh, that we can build a, a scope and sequence and, and knock out uh, as many of these outcomes as we can. So the first thing that we need to do is take a look at the actual outcomes. Uh, so I've got this PDF document uh, from Shape America, and it goes through in, in it's the standards document just in, in PDF format. So if, as I look at this chart, um, I'm seeing E22 down here. Uh, E23 is not uh, an outcome for K2, but it is for 3.5, 24, 25, 27. We're going to take a look and see what E22 is. Just out of curiosity, um, we'll go there. I don't have all of these memorized yet. I use this document a lot. E22 is volleying, underhand volleying, okay? Um, and then E23 is overhead volleying. And you can see K through 3, there are no outcomes there at all. That's why it's blocked off. Um, E23 is blocked off there. E24 is striking with a short implement. 25 is striking with a long implement. And then 26 would be combination. So volleying and striking. Um, they're two areas in the outcomes that we haven't addressed yet and we want to. So the way that this works is um, I'll go in and let's take volleying and grab my little I-beam tool and then I'll go in here and just copy this bring it back up to my word doc and paste them in 
looks pretty ugly. All right, but it's going to be work. It's going to it's going to work. So that's that's E22. Now we want to go through and E23 it doesn't impact K through 2. Starts in at at 4 through 5, but we still want to add it because it's a volleying outcome. All right. Here's my word doc. Bam. And now we have all of the volleying outcomes listed out on our word doc. And I'm just going to change this to Arial 12 points so that it is all the same. Do a little work here. Clean this up. All right, so I'm back and uh, I worked on formatting all of those outcomes uh, in the same format that we use in our activity plans on open. And uh, you'll see it makes it a lot nicer to read. And it took me about a half hour to do, uh, but it'll really be worth it once we start to write the activities. So you can see that uh, there's volleying underhand, uh, volleying overhead, striking short implement, and uh, striking long implement. And within that, I've actually gone in and separated out the K through 2 and the 3 through 5, in this case 3 through 4, uh, standards. So this will make it easier when we're trying to build the scope and sequence uh, from kindergarten all the way through grade 4. We'll see exactly where students need to be along the way. And I love the way that some of these standards, or outcomes rather, are written uh, because it actually even tells us you know, some examples of activities that students should be able to do by a specific grade level. It's also interesting to see um, the developmental appropriateness of certain youth sport activities and where we as a physical education community have seen the majority of students uh, need to be along the developmental progression and where we tend to throw our kids in at an early age when maybe tasks are not quite developmentally appropriate for what we're asking of them. So that's interesting to take a look at as well. So anyway, this is a, a really good start. Now the conversation will begin on how do we organize the modules for this. So does it make sense to have volleying and striking as one module uh, so that we can cover all of these outcomes uh, within one module? Or would it make sense to create a separate volleying and a separate striking module? So I know that uh, it's, it's difficult for some teachers to fit all of this in a very tight schedule. You know, their block plan uh, may really only have one day a week PE or two days a week PE, and that makes it difficult to have multiple modules. So sometimes combining them, um, you know, eight activities that would cover volleying and striking uh, would make a lot of sense. But what will happen here is uh, now that I've created this video and and sent it out for everybody to view, um, I would love your feedback. And how would you teach volleying and striking? Would you combine them into one module? Uh, would you have a, a separate volleying module and a separate striking module? And and I'll take it back to the development council, uh, the open development council, and we'll discuss it. And and talk about the best way to approach it and based on all that feedback we'll proceed so uh, this is one example of how we kind of go about that process we start with the outcomes and now it's all about designing the instructional activities and the instructional environment so that the students can work towards these outcomes I, I just worked on the bottom half here right because I saw that there was a a direct link between the K2 and the 3.5 and we would be able to, to build a, a nice scope and sequence across that module. Um, there's some other places down here um, in the first half of standard one that we'd be able to do the same thing and then of course standard five. Uh, so the goal of what we're, we're trying to do with this project is not just cover them in yellow form, right? We don't want to just collaterally uh, address standards and outcomes. We want to target standards and outcomes. So I'm not going to be satisfied until this entire thing is green and, uh, and we're, we're targeting every single outcome in some way, shape, or form. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to contribute, head over to the Contribute section of uh, openphyzed.org. And if you want to just send me some ideas, your thoughts around this, you can 
comment on the blog. You can hit me on Twitter. Um, any way that uh, you want to communicate is fine. And I really appreciate everybody's participation so, so far. I'm looking forward to uh, really building this out with everybody. So thanks a lot, and uh, see you soon.